Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today we're talking about the Slutsky equation, which is total effect equals substitution effect plus the income effect. I think the best way to explain this is with a graphical example that we'll walk through slowly, and then we will talk about a more advanced version using Marshallian and Hicksian demands. Here is going to be the example for today. There are going to be two goods, Chipotle and pasta. They're both normal goods. We have well-behaved preferences over these two goods, which means things like our indifference curves are convex, nothing fancy or weird is happening, and it's just to help us understand what's happening a little bit better. Now, the overall story here is that we're going to have some initial prices for Chipotle and pasta, and we have some original optimal bundle. The price of Chipotle is going to go up, and then we're going to see what happens with the substitution and the income effect. I'm going to talk about why the substitution effect is always negative for Chipotle and positive for pasta. I'm going to talk about why the income effect should make both goods go down. And again, we are going to identify all of these points on the graph. Now, this graph is going to start out pretty clean and get pretty messy so what I'm going to do is at each stage I will just gray out what we've done before so that the colored portions can indicate what I want us to focus on so all we're going to do first is we know what's happening we have our indifference curve we have our budget constraint we find where they're tangent and we get this point in orange we're going to call that the OG or the original optimal bundle now we are going to refine the new optimal bundle when the price of Chipotle goes up so we have a new budget constraint that new budget constraint is going to meet pasta at the same place that it did before because the price of pasta hasn't changed, but we can now buy a lower amount of Chipotle if we spend all our money on Chipotle. We've got a new indifference curve. Here's our, that new indifference curve in pink. We find our new optimal bundle. Again, I'll put that point in pink. We'll call that our new optimal bundle. And the difference between our OG optimal bundle and our new optimal bundle, well, that's the total effect. That is the effect that we're trying to split out into the substitution effect and the income effect. Now, what we are going to do next is we are going to split this out and find the substitution effect. The substitution substitution effect is going to be a little convoluted, so we'll walk through this slowly. We've started at this orange OG original bundle, and we know we have gone to this new pink bundle here with that second budget constraint. But now we're going to add a new budget constraint to this graph. And that budget constraint is going to answer the question, what if I could afford the original optimal bundle at the new prices? So I'm going to take the slope of this budget curve this BC2, and I'm just going to shift it out until it passes through this orange point. And the parallel budget constraint that passes through this original orange OG point is going to be BC3. And now notice that where it touches the indifference curve, it's not tangent anymore, so we must be on some higher indifference curve, which tells me that, well, if I could afford the orange bundle at the new prices, I probably would not buy that original bundle. I would buy some other bundle. Well, that some other bundle is on a higher indifference curve. So let's just draw that higher indifference curve. So this IC3 curve is that indifference curve that we would be on with the new prices where we could afford the old bundle. Now I'm going to find the optimal between this BC3 and this IC3. That's going to be this green bundle here. Notice that I've called it the hypothetical optimal bundle because no one is actually handing me money. When the prices change, no one is going to pop out from outside that Chipotle and hand me some cash. So this is all a thought experiment. So this is all me thinking about, well, what if I did have enough money to afford that old bundle at the new prices? Then I would buy this green bundle here. So the difference between this orange bundle and this green bundle is the substitution effect. Now we also know that the total effect is just the substitution effect plus the income effect. So I can say, well, if orange to green is the substitution effect, it must be the case that green to pink is the income effect because I know that orange to pink is the total effect. So if we get rid of the lines, we can see it a little better where we've said, okay, orange to green is the substitution effect. I know that orange to pink is the total effect, which means that the difference between total effect and substitution effect must be the income effect. So that is the way that I can get around this graphically, but how can I get around this in terms of math. Well, in terms of math, we're going to turn to the Marshallian and Hicksian demand. So this is the Slutsky equation for Marshallian and Hicksian demand, where I'm just going to say total effect is the derivative of Marshallian demand with respect to price. So for Chipotle, this would be the derivative of the Marshallian demand for Chipotle with respect to the price of Chipotle. Substitution effect is the Hicksian demand of Chipotle, the derivative of the Hicksian demand of Chipotle with respect to the price of Chipotle. The income effect is going to be the Marshallian demand of Chipotle times negative one or the negative version 
of the derivative of the Marshallian demand of Chipotle with respect to income. Now in a previous video we talked about why ordinary goods always have a negative substitution effect. When the price of that good goes up you should always substitute away from that good towards another good. So the substitution effect is always going to be negative. If the price of Chipotle goes up, substitution effect says that the quantity of Chipotle should always go down and the quantity of the other good should always go up. Again because you're substituting away from the good that became more expensive towards the good whose price hasn't changed. It would be the opposite if the price went down you would substitute towards that newly cheaper good and away from the now more expensive good. Now the income effect is something that seems a little strange. Why do we have the Marshallian demand in here? This derivative of Marshallian demand with respect to income is like how much less you buy per dollar that you lost. Well that depends on how much of x you're buying. So if you think about it in terms of like a per unit loss then you need to multiply by the number of units to figure out what your total loss is. And so you just multiply by Marshallian demand to get your total loss. So hopefully this makes the Slutsky equation make a little more sense. If it did make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.